Hello my friends, today we will discuss the parathyroid adenoma and hyperplasia. My name is Sameh Mikhail and I am a pathology resident. And this is the pathway channel. Please subscribe and like. I will start by the function of the parathyroid hormone. So the parathyroid hormone regulates the calcium homeostasis and the parathyroid gland activity is controlled by the level of the free ionized calcium in blood. When the calcium levels are elevated, this will create a negative feedback loop which will inhibit further parathyroid hormone secretion. So how can the parathyroid hormone controls or elevate the calcium level in blood? By four mechanisms. The first one by increasing the intestinal calcium absorption and this happens through conversion of the vitamin D to its active form in the kidneys. Number two, it will enhance the osteoclastic activity and this will increase the bone resorption, thus increasing the ionized calcium. Number three, increasing renal tubular reabsorption of calcium. Number four, increase urinary phosphate excretion. Microscopically, we will have three types of cells. Number one, the chief cells, which is the predominant cell. And it has a central, rounded, uniform nuclei with either light to dark pink or clear cytoplasm. And we will see this on the slides. And the chief cells, they are the main secretory cells for the parathyroid hormone. Number two are the oxyphil cells. They are either found single or in clusters, slightly larger than the chief cells, and they have acidophilic cytoplasm. They are tightly packed with mitochondria, but they do not secrete parathyroid hormone as the chief cells. Number three is the adipose tissue, and it forms in a normal parathyroid gland from 25 to 40 percent of the total tissue. So what are the causes of hyperparathyroidism? Number one, it could be an adenoma. Number two, hyperplasia. Number three, carcinoma or familial syndrome. We will discuss today the three first causes, which are the adenoma, hyperplasia and carcinoma. How to differentiate between them? For the adenoma and the hyperplasia, adenoma is found in one gland or usually found in one gland, but the hyperplasia can affect more than one gland. Usually it affects the four glands. The carcinoma usually affects one gland. Adenoma is well circumscribed and as we will see in the slides, it will be separated from the normal parathyroid gland by thin or delicate capsule. But the hyperplasia can be diffuse or nodular. For the carcinoma, it's well circumscribed and it's characterized by its invasive character. It can be nodular or trabecular. As we mentioned, the adenoma is separated or surrounded by a delicate capsule, hyperplasia no capsule, and in the carcinoma, it can have dense fibrous capsule. In the adenoma, as we will see in the slides, we will find compressed normal parathyroid tissue. And this compression is caused by the parathyroid adenoma. And in the hyperplasia, we need to correlate clinically to see whether this is the hyperdense tissue is hyperplasia, primary, secondary, or tertiary, or it is an adenoma. It affects one gland, it can, we can call it adenoma. And if it affects the four glands, then it will go more with hyperplasia. It's also important to review, as I will mention on the slides, the radiology findings. The carcinoma, the reliable diagnosis of carcinoma is invasion or metastasis. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe and like. 
and let's go to the slide section. Hello, my friends. Today we will discuss the parathyroid adenoma, the parathyroid hyperplasia. And before we start, I just want to let you know that both of them, they have the same microscopic picture. So everything I will explain here will be applied to the parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. I will start by 5x, and I would like you to see at this power the difference in density between a normal parathyroid tissue and the parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. On the right-hand side, you'll find the parathyroid normal tissue. And as we mentioned in our presentation, you will find three types of cells. Number one, the chief cells. Two, the oxyphil cells. And number three, the adipose tissue, which is well identified at the low power. So all these cells, these are adipose tissue. And the same type of cells you will find in the parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. It's just the difference in density. So I hope you can appreciate the difference in density between this area and that area. Here it's more dense with less adipose tissue. So the other difference you may find enlarged nuclei in the parathyroid adenoma compared to the normal parathyroid gland. This is just hemorrhage, maybe from the procedure, and these are just RBCs. The parathyroid adenoma may be separated from the normal parathyroid gland by a thin capsule, like here. And in the parathyroid adenoma, not the hyperplasia, you will find compressed parathyroid, normal parathyroid tissue separated from the, the parathyroid adenoma as shown here. So this is a parathyroid adenoma and this is a normal compressed parathyroid tissue. How to differentiate between the parathyroid adenoma and the hyperplasia? It's just clinical differentiation. Review all the radiologic findings and see whether it's affecting four glands or it's affecting only one gland. So let's go at a high power, try to identify the cells of the parathyroid gland. So now we are at the 40X, and I hope you can see the cells. Like these are the oxyphil cells. They are, are characterized by having a basal, well-demarcated nucleus. And these are the, the chief cells, which have a central nucleus. Of course, it's hard to differentiate whether this is central or basal, but I hope you can differentiate between the color of this cluster of cells and the rest of the cells surrounding it. Another feature, other than the hyperdense tissue you may see in the parathyroid adenoma or the hyperplasia, is follicle formation. So this is kind of a follicle filled with colloid material, and this is kind of another follicle with colloid material. This is another one. And it can be mistaken with the thyroid gland, but they are a negative for thyroglobulin. Let's see what we have in this field. So I hope we are experts now to identify the cells. So these cells are the oxyphil cells. These cells are the chief cells. And this is just a blood vessel. So these are adipose tissue, which we cannot see frequently because this is a hyperdense tissue, as we mentioned. So the parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia, the cells are present in the form of nests, separated by thin fibrous uh, tissue septa. 
which contains the capillaries or the blood vessels. Let's have some revision here. This is again two population of cells, the oxyphil cells and the chief cells. And by the way, the chief cells are the cells secreting mainly the parathyroid hormone. And in the parathyroid adenoma, you may see some clearing of this chief cells. As we can see here, the cytoplasm is cleared. This is the 20X, just to give you another view to differentiate between these two type of cells. This is just a blood vessel here. And here we can see follicle with colloid material, as we mentioned. And this is another follicle, another follicle. This is not an uncommon uh, finding in parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. This is another field of hyperdense tissue with follicle formation. Many follicles are formed and population of chief cells with some adipose tissue. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like to receive more videos. Bye-bye.